New things that we're starting to see because of the crisis. I mean, obviously, we, we all are hearing about it all the time, at least stateside, like more homes being foreclosed, folks not having spaces to live. I mean, before I got on the plane and head out here, it was like 20,000 job cuts that I had just heard about. And, you know, I mean, it's just wild. You can go into so many different kind of areas and see working people being impacted by the global crisis, even access to credit for like, you know, smaller businesses or people trying to do something is, is limited now and the banks aren't giving folks money. So uh, we definitely see see that. But there's also an opportunity, I think, because there's a popular anger and resentment that you can see um, in a lot of people's faces that, you know, that, that is now there because a lot of the, the fallacies and a lot of the contradictions of neoliberal capitalism are coming are coming home to roost almost, if you will, right? Like we've been implementing these policies elsewhere for the good last chunk of the last 20 years, and now home we're having to deal with the very same things that we exported, and it's not pretty. But it gives folks that kind of aha moment, like maybe maybe we were a little bit wrong about that, and, um, you know, in, in terms of possibilities. I mean, I think. It kind of negated the neoliberalist argument that the market would correct itself and all of these things which you know were untrue. So um, in terms of positioning though, I think uh, you know, out of necessity and like the need because like these things happening are actually hurting people. Like we don't want to see this stuff continue to happen. So uh, we're uh, involved in various conversations uh, and developing of new alliances uh, and programs and campaigns to kind of begin to try to move a, a coherent economic uh, recovery campaign uh, forward with uh, obviously uh, our partners and allies in the grassroots global justice, but also you know from the from our base who we are labor organized labor in the U.S. I mean as jobs are just that is who that's who birthed us birthed us and like that's who we are. So I think we also are trying to find ways to to really relate and bring organized labor and new labor formations that are emerging. Folks like the National Domestic Workers Alliance, the National Taxi Workers Alliance, day laborers. Um, you know. I'm sorry, I got too much to throw out there. Um, but there's yes, I follow. Yeah, there is, there is yeah, definite yeah. new uh, informal sector organizing that's happening in the U.S. that presents great opportunities, uh, you know, to, to bring the most marginalized uh, to the front and say, well, you know, we want our fair share too, and we're all workers, and we should have a, a base minimum for working people in the U.S. So. Um, how, okay, I want to come back to that in a second. Are you, do you deal at all with, say, the climate change? Do we deal? With the, yeah. Well, I, I don't know how we don't deal with it because it's happening to yeah. us. It's a little bit hard. But. Yeah, but what I mean by that is, are they, is it, do you think the, 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 the fact of climate change are more likely the mitigation efforts uh, for climate change? I, do you see, have you, it, you may not have. I mean, may not be you know, some local have. coalitions have started going in that direction. Right. Uh, for example, in Rhode Island, the folks are really taking on green jobs. Right. That's something okay, that's that they're engaging in. And really, I think the, the folks in those discussions are thinking, if this is going to move, how do we position and set this up so that it helps working people uh, and is not just taken over by uh, corporations and is the next phase of capitalism? How do we put in provisions uh, that help working families here? Uh, you know, uh, we, we were in some discussion, although we, we, we need to do obviously more with Van Jones and the Green for All folks uh, around the Green Jobs campaign, the Green Jobs Corp, and some of that uh, work that was coming out of those networks. But I think organizationally, we are also so we're in the middle of um, almost reaffirming who we are, but also relaunching Jobs of Justice. Uh, we're going through this planning process that has been over the last two years. Uh, and that is now central, I think, to a lot of people's minds. Uh, and, you know, I think we want to figure out uh, how do we connect and, and encourage people to do what's happening, like the Blue Green Alliance that Steel is doing, uh, and other networks like the Apollo folks that were doing a lot of that stuff. How do we encourage and, and bring that stuff to local coalitions to also, you know, really focus in on that more? So, okay, that was... That's great. So, okay, now I'm going to ask the, the, the other question. I try to just to keep your view of the forum and what you think you could get out of the forum. 
So the forum for us has been uh, an amazing process that has actually, for us, been grounding and, and, and led to real work with real results. Uh, for example, uh, several years ago, we began a collaboration with the National Trade Union Initiative, NTUI. Uh, and since then, we've done various things together. Uh, we've developed uh, the framework for a campaign with 17 other countries uh, to launch a global uh, garment, um, um, a, floor, a floor wage uh, for, for garment workers globally in the global industry. Uh, and we're getting ready to launch that this year um, in, 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 in India, China, and do a couple of things there. Uh, and anchor that to organizing that's happening in the U.S., uh, potential organizing of uh, you know, either the, the shipping uh, and distribution or even potentially like the biggest suppliers of garments. Uh, but it's a model that we've also been replicate, replicating uh, with other countries in terms of healthcare, in terms of telecommunication workers. Um, and we've made and helped really, uh, you know, build new alliances, uh, for example, between communication workers in India and the communication workers of America. Um, and one of the, another recent example of collaboration has been uh, the Indian Worker Congress and what's happening with the signal workers, uh, you know, and making human trafficking uh, an issue, right? And so collaborating here in the U.S., uh, you know, having uh, congressional uh, folks kind of do something on behalf of the workers, but also organizing uh, the families of the Indian workers in India to do stuff locally to really kind of put it out there uh, and encourage more collaboration between our countries. Uh, I mean, I think we've definitely um, had great relationships, um, you know, with a lot of our allies in Europe and in other places, the doc, the who. Uh, you know, have been very inspiring. We've been able to do a lot of learning from other social movements and how they've gone about, uh, you know, making bridges between social movements and trade union movements uh, in their respective countries. So it's a very, it's a very important and, and useful space for us. Does, does uh, Ananya still work in Oh, yeah, she is uh, rocking out out there in, in a way that I can't even describe, but uh, yeah, she's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> what?